Although Daniel transitioned two years ago, recently he started to worry that his body is beginning to change. I've been feeling a we little weird, and it's been feeling weird, so. I stay up a lot of nights talking with my parents about it, and I don't get a lot of sleep. Yeah, and yeah. I just don't like feeling different. It starts uh, making my tummy hurt a little, so sometimes um, it makes me feel, cry when I'm very, 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 very tired. To, to develop breasts would be horrifying for him. He doesn't want to be the kid that has to be different. And he has talked about suicide or killing himself before, which is why we immediately sought the help of professionals. I think he finds a great deal of reassurance knowing that there are things, there are steps we can take where he can look like more like a boy and pass to be more like a boy. Asher, quick, make it to the top. Quick. It's now possible for kids like Daniel to never have to go through the puberty of their biological sex. But timing is crucial. So Daniel's parents are taking him to a clinic in Chicago. The gender program at Lurie Children's Hospital is one of a growing number of clinics around the country providing treatment to gender non-conforming and transgender kids. How are you? Did you grow Good. since last time I saw you? Um, yeah. And you just had a birthday, right? On the 20th? Happy belated. Shoes off if you don't mind, okay? So these kids really are a, a new generation who's being, who are being cared for completely differently than children were in the past. And that is, it's exciting for them to have opportunities that somebody wouldn't have had even, even 10 years ago. Um, but it's also very challenging for the medical community to find the right way to do this. Stuff down here, I'm tell you. One of the biggest developments in the treatment of transgender kids came in 2007 with the introduction of hormone blockers, drugs that suspend puberty and slow all physical development. The pubertal blockers um, are the medicines that pause puberty. So the idea is that we can just put the pause button on puberty and let children have a little more time to grow and develop and, and be more confident of their gender identity. Okay, squeeze, then I'll be done, okay? But the treatment of transgender kids can be controversial. It's a field of medicine with very little research. And the few studies that do exist suggest that for most kids, the distress about gender will shift with time. The majority of children with gender dysphoria um, will not grow up to be transgender adolescents or adults. But I think the challenge is that we're not able to definitively predict for whom gender dysphoria will continue and for those that it may not continue. Our goal is to try to figure out which children are going to continue to identify as different than their natal sex. And we don't have any definitive test to do that right now. And that's, that's very challenging. I wish there was a test to say, oh yeah, of course, you're five and you think this now and you will when you're 15 and you will when you're 30. I mean, we don't have it though. So it's a real challenge. Hello, hello. Hey. Look who's here. How are you, Daniel? But there is growing consensus that the more intense gender dysphoria is in childhood, the more likely it is to persist, and that puberty itself can also be a telling predictor. And I just wanted to see if you were noticing any changes in your body recently that had you maybe feeling worried or sad. Well... This um, one over here, it like, it started getting real tender. I think uh, Daniel had been really concerned about how quickly this was gonna happen and just really feeling strongly about not developing breasts. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband and I want to do anything we need to to keep his emotional uh, well-being in mind and how mm -hmm. he feels about himself. Okay. 
early intervention does make a huge difference. Once physical changes, some physical changes of puberty have occurred, um, you know, voice deepening in boy body people, for instance, they are irreversible. So really starting puberty blocking medications as early as possible is really important for some people who are really experiencing distress. So there is a, the, a very, very faint amount of, um, of breast tissue under the, um, under the right breast. I mean, it's, it's just a little tiny bit. We typically want to see that a, that a child has had has had a little bit of puberal development, but that's the point at which we can start sort of talking about blocking puberty. Mm -hmm. The medications that we use for puberty blockers um, all work, and for the most part have, um, have few side effects. This is a sample of what the implant is. Mm, that small. Yeah. The medications are very expensive, and so they can be fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a year for some of these things, which is cost prohibitive for most people. So we have been, we have worked on an option that um, that we have we can offer here now, actually, and which is called Vantus, and its FDA approval is for um, men with prostate cancer, but this has been used successfully by pediatric endocrinologists taking care of kids like Daniel. Um, and it seems to work just as well, and it is a lot less expensive. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Vantas is not, it's not approved for children, but none of these medications are actually approved for use in, in this mm -hmm. situation. And so, often, for yeah. any of these meds. Oh, for any of them. Okay. okay. We, we have a lot of experience in pediatric endocrinology using pubertal blockers, and from all the evidence we have, they are generally a very safe medication. But... The concerns with this population are just different because we're using them at a little different age and for a different purpose. So whether it is having any negative effect on their adult bone density or their neurologic development, I think is, we, we don't know. I much prefer to take care of conditions that have been well-researched um, and well-studied for 50 years, and that is not the case here. Um, we, we just really need good, research that we don't have yet. They're, they're not easy decisions to make and they shouldn't be made quickly. And I think the take home message today is that nothing is going to happen quickly. Okay, nothing. This generation of kids are really, they're, they're the pioneers. They're gonna be the ones to teach us.